How can you manage your flock so as to avoid major problems with the biggest difficulty that goat and sheep farmers have, and that is parasites, particularly stomach worms. Hello, I'm Lonnie Oldag with Rolling O Farms, and in this video, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to look at some management practices that'll help you be more successful in raising goats and sheep. Now, we brought in this flock of sheep for an inspection. It's a few weeks after the spring green up here in Alabama, and it's time to start monitoring to make sure that we don't have an overload of parasites, stomach worms in particular. Now, you may be wondering, well, how do you do that? How do you visually inspect them and see if you have a problem? Well, we did a video on that. This is actually part two in the series dealing with the controlling of parasites. And I'll try to link that first video in the comments below and also at the end of this video. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to try to talk about some ways that you can manage your herd or flock so that you don't have a problem with worms. Come along. When it comes to controlling parasites in goats and sheep, you'll hear a lot of people talk about breeds that are genetically resistant to worms. And there is some truth to that. There are definitely certain breeds that have a higher resistance to parasites than others. Uh, in the goat world, and when it comes to meat goats, the Kiko have a reputation for being much more resistant than the boar goats. The boar goats were developed in South Africa where it's pretty dry, there are not a lot of parasites. And so that breed didn't develop a lot of resistance to parasites. And so the Kikos do tend to be more parasite resistant than the boar goats do. In the sheep world, when it comes to hair sheep, the St. Croix and the Barbido and the Katahdins all have a reputation for being pretty parasite resistant. And again, that has some to do with where they were developed. They were developed in areas where there were high loads of parasites and they were bred out of, out of gen, genes that had more of a resistance to parasites. So there is some truth to that. However, don't let someone talk you into the idea that St. Croix or Barbado or Kikos are absolutely bulletproof when it comes to parasites. Even the best purebred are still susceptible to parasites if they're not managed properly. And that's the reason why management is so key to being able to control parasites in goats and sheep. So even among the more parasite resistant breeds, you'll still want to notice and monitor your herd or flock for animals that are more susceptible to parasites than others. So regardless of the breed, you may notice that in your herd or in your flock, there's one animal and every time you bring it in, it shows symptoms that it is wormy. And so you have to constantly deworm it. Well, that may be a candidate for culling out. Now, I would not recommend that just because an animal shows signs of having worms one time that you should automatically cull it. There are a lot of factors besides genetics that figure into that. For instance, maybe that particular animal just had a very heavy exposure to worms. Maybe that animal has had other stresses going on that has caused it to be more susceptible, such as it's pregnant or it's nursing, or maybe it's been sick with something. All of that will lower its resistance to the worms and cause worms to be more of a problem. So if an animal comes through and it needs to be dewormed and the rest of the flock seems to be okay, I'll note that animal, but I won't necessarily cull it out. Now, if every time I bring those animals in to inspect them, that animal has symptoms, then I may consider culling that particular animal. So while genetics and strategic culling can be a help in controlling parasites, it's probably not going to be the cure-all. There probably will be times where you need to chemically deworm animals. And your strategy about deworming goes a long way in determining your long-term success in your deworming program. For instance, there are two main schools of thought when it comes to chemically deworming animals. In other words, when you see that your animals have uh, parasite problems and you begin to deworm them, how do you do it? One of the things that people often ask me is, well, how often do you deworm? Well, 
One strategy is bring all the animals in, deworm all of them, whether they need it or not, on a set schedule, like every six months or every three months. The problem with this strategy, and I tried it for a number of years, is that after a while, you're going to create a problem. And the problem that you're gonna create is a drug-resistant parasite. What happens is, when you bring a flock in and you deworm all of them, whether they need it all, first of all, you're wasting money because if you're deworming animals that don't need it, then that's just uh, money down the drain. Second of all, what you're doing is you're destroying all of the worms in that animal except the ones that are resistant to that particular wormer that you're using. So now when you turn your animals back out into the field, the only worms that they have in their system are the worms that are resistant to that dewormer. Therefore, the only eggs that are being laid in your field are eggs that are resistant to that wormer. So then the whole new crop of worms that you have are all going to be resistant to that wormer. So someone says, well, then next time bring them in and just use a different wormer. And that'll work well for a while because again, you're destroying 90% of the worms, but the 10% that are left are now resistant to two wormers. The wormer that you use the first time and now the wormer that you use the second time. And the problem that we have is there's only three different classes of wormers. So once you have built up a resistant worm parasite to all three of those classes, there's not much else you can do as far as chemically deworming. So for that reason, the strategy of just worming all of the animals at once, whether they need it or not, on a set period, a set schedule, such every six months or every, every three months, will only work for a certain period of time. And then what you're going to have is a situation where you have no other chemical help that you can use in deworming your animals. So the second school of thought is to bring the animals in and to monitor the animals to see which animals need help. And we talked about that in the previous video. I'll try to link that video in the description below. But what we do is we do an eyelid check. We check the color of the eyelid to tell if the animal is anemic or not. It's called a FAMACHA score. And when we determine that an animal does need help, that it's being overcome by a worm load, then what we do is we treat only that animal, chemically deworm only that animal. That helps that animal, but it doesn't uh, wipe out all of the worms and leave us only with resistant worms. The rest of the flock is still depositing genetically diverse uh, worm eggs. Therefore, we're not creating a parasite, a drug resistant parasite in the worms. Now, there are only three classes of wormers. And well, I'll talk about those three classes in the next video in this series. But uh, what we wanna do is we want to use one class of wormer for as long as it's effective. So we bring our flock in, we monitor our flock. Here's an animal that needs to be treated. We treat that animal, we treat maybe another animal that needs it, but we don't treat all of them. And we continue to use that same wormer until it's no longer effective. And that may be a year, maybe five years. But when we see that that wormer is no longer effective, then we switch to a different class of wormer and we begin to use it and we use it as long as it's effective. And the idea is we stretch out, we lengthen the time that we're able to use a wormer before we build up a parasite that is resistant to the wormer. Once we build up a parasite that's resistant to all three classes of wormers, we're out of options. So we wanna stretch that out as long as we can. And what I have found is if you stretch it out and it lasts two or three years, you're able to get two or three years out of every wormer. By the time you go back to that first wormer, the worms are generally not resistant to it anymore. And so you can use that wormer effectively again. Now, by far the most effective management tool when it comes to controlling parasites in goats and sheep is rotational grazing. Rotational grazing is where you continue to move your herd or flock from one pasture to another or one paddock within that pasture from another. Understanding the life cycle of the stomach worm is helpful in understanding why this is effective. Basically, the stomach worm, when it's inside the animal, is attached to the digestive tract of the animal and is sucking blood and laying eggs. Those eggs are being pooped out onto the pasture. And when the temperature is warm and there's enough humidity, those eggs hatch out. And the larva then attaches itself to the grass, which then the goats or sheep eat and ingest, and therefore the cycle repeats itself because now you have the, the worm inside the body again and it grows, sucks blood, lays eggs, and it just continues. So what happens is you get a, a, a buildup of worms on a particular pasture because the more eggs are being laid and hatching out and so forth. So 
the way to break that cycle is to move the animals off of that pasture to another pasture. Because what happens is when there are no animals to ingest that larva, the worm egg hatches out, the larva attaches itself to the grass, but if it's not ingested within a short period of time, it can't live and it dies. So just after a short period of time, basically those larvae that have hatched out die if there's nothing there to eat it and, and internalize it into their digestive tract. So what you want to do is you want to take your animals and put them on a pasture for maybe three to five, seven days, probably not longer than a week. Let them graze that particular section of the pasture down. And of course, what they're doing is they're pooping and they're laying eggs in there, but those eggs haven't had a chance to hatch out yet. And then after three to five days, you want to move them to a different section of pasture. You can stretch that out longer, but again, the shorter period of time, the less chance of you have those eggs hatching out. Move them to another pasture. In the pasture that's now vacant, what's happening is those eggs are hatching out, the larva is attaching itself to the grass, but there are no goats or sheep to eat the grass. So the larva die. And now your goats or sheep are on another section of pasture where there are no, no worms or parasites, or at least not a high, high uh, load of them. After three to five days, move them again. Now don't bring them back into that first paddock if you can for 60 days. 30 days, they say, is usually good, but the thing is, not all of those eggs hatch out at the same time. So if you give it 60 days, basically you're moving into a clean pasture. Nearly all of those eggs have had opportunity to hatch out and to the larva die before you moved it back in if you wait two months. Move them back into that pasture, leave them on there for three to five days, repeat that process around, and basically every week you're moving to a clean pasture and everything that ever is deposited in the old pasture is dying before the goats or sheep get an opportunity to come back in. All right, so here are the three strategies that are necessary for controlling parasites in goats and sheep. Number one, cull animals that are repeat offenders. If you have an animal that just regularly struggles with parasites, it may be best to cull that animal out of your herd or flock. Number two, monitor your herd or flock regularly doing the FAMACHA score, checking their eyes, treat only the animals that need treatment and don't treat the rest. Number three, use rotational grazing. Move those animals from paddock to paddock, keeping them out of that area for 60 days so that all of the larvae have an opportunity to die out before you move the animals back in. Now, Lord willing, in the third video in this series, we're gonna talk about different chemical dewormers, the three classes of dewormers, how to use them, uh, what dosage we should use, and other tips and tricks that may help along that line. If you need more in-depth information on this, I would encourage you to visit a website, www.wormx.info. They have a lot of good information in controlling parasites in goats and sheep. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you're within driving distance of Northwest Alabama and you're looking for goats and sheep for a starter, starter herd or flock or maybe additional breeding stock, give me a call, see what I have available. I do appreciate you watching the video and as always, happy farming. <music>